in the last stream, we were working on setting up this colossal chest to store all of our items. This thing is insanely big. I don't even know how many slots this has, but you can see here as we start scrolling, we've already gone through quite a few items. And if I keep scrolling at the same speed, it just keeps going. We have got a ton of space here, probably more than enough to last us well into our playthrough. We also set up a couple of jumbo furnaces and our first Inferium furnace. Between streams, I've added the fourth and final jumbo furnace. And just for symmetry, I've got another Inferium furnace. I've also done a little bit more in the way of base organization. I've moved our unlimited water source to the back of the colossal chest here. And I've moved like our dark oak crucible and our dark oak barrel just to make it look a little bit more organized. And of course, right at the end of the last episode, we did get our Tinker's Smeltery up and running, which allowed us to get this custom iron pickaxe, which we upgraded with both diamonds and redstone. So now we can mine almost anything here in the mining dimension. And if I'm not mistaken, what we can do here as well is if we hold down shift and the FTB auto mine key at the same time, you can then use the scroll wheel in the top left. And if we go for small tunnel, what we should be able to do is just mine kind of in a straight line like this until we come across ores. We can then mine those ores and then just keep going in a straight line. And I think this is probably going to be the better way, of course, if we uh, put down torches as we go here of finding large amounts of whatever ore it is that we're after. Because whilst you can explore, the little caves around us don't appear to be particularly big. And this does give us a fairly large reach and allows us to find new ores very quickly, which is pretty nice but we don't want to be mining forever. What we want to do is we want to automate the production of all of these resources via the use of mystical agriculture back in the overworld. So to do that, we need to get an infusion altar. The infusion altar here also requires pedestals. We need eight infusion pedestals. And with this, we will be able to start making diamond seeds, lapis seeds, gold seeds, emerald seeds, iron seeds, and basically every seed in the future. Most of the seeds in the pack need the infusion altar to be crafted. It's really only the super basic seeds like dirt, inferium, stone, and wood that can be made in the seed reconstructor. So this actually isn't too difficult. We do need some red carpet, which might be the trickiest bit of all of it. For the red carpet, we do need red dye, which we can get from beets and we can also get from poppies. Poppies, I think, are probably the way we're going to go about this, the same is also true for wool. We need uh, string for wool or we need sheep for wool, one of the two. And so before we can get started with this, I think we're first going to have to go over into sifting because the sifting is going to allow us to get seeds. It's possible we might find beetroot seeds. Even if we don't find beetroot seeds, I think it's likely that we get grass seeds from sifting dirt. Those grass seeds we can then use to turn dirt into grass. And then once we have grass, we can not only try and spawn some passive mobs, but we could also look at bone mealing that grass to get things like poppies to get that red dye. And so if we're gonna sift, the reason we've not done it up until now is that the oak sieve requires two diamond sticks. Thankfully, we do now have diamonds in our chest here. And so making two diamond sticks is not gonna be difficult for us at all. The quest here does want us to make four, that's fine. It looks like the quest wants us to make both the regular sieve, which is just four planks and one slab. That is also not gonna be a problem. Let's go ahead, type that into JI and shift click in the sieve recipe. Then the heavy oak sieve requires the pre-existing oak sieve with four logs. That is also fine. The only difference here is that the heavy sieve can sift compressed blocks. And so unlike the regular sieve that can only sift one dirt at a time, the compressed sieve can sift nine dirt at a time via a compressed dirt. So for any of this to work, we do need a mesh. The first mesh we need is a string mesh. I do wonder if we can use silkworms here to get that string mesh. I think we can. It doesn't show it, I don't think, in the quest book here. But if we get a regular Minecraft sapling, which we don't have, but we can craft via the use of four of these wood essence like this, we should then be able to plant that and sprint to get it to grow. Once it's grown, if we then craft up some sticks, we can craft, I believe, four sticks into one crook like this. And if we go ahead and break all of these leaves with the crook, you do need to make sure you set your ultimate back to shapeless if you want to break everything. That's gonna get us some silkworms. And then now, if we go ahead, break this tree down, 
replant it and grow it again. This time I'm going to grow a few of these trees. I just want to make sure they all have leaves that touch because now what we can do is we can right click the silkworm onto any one of these leaves and that's going to infest that block and what's going to happen over the course of the next minute or so that infested leaf is going to spread to all of the other leaves and they're going to turn into infested leaves and once the whole set of leaves has become infested we can then break all of those and we should get a very large amount of string which is not only going to allow us to make the string mesh here but it's also going to be very useful for making that red carpet because of course we can craft four string into one wall once we have one string as i mentioned before we're then going to want to get some dirt we do have dirt ready to go here and we are going to have to compact that into compressed dirt and this can then be sifted in the heavy sieve and we're going to get a ton of stuff all of these different items have different percentage chances they're not all guaranteed the two that i'm most interested in are wheat seeds if we can get wheat seeds we could set up a wheat farm which i might do in this plot right here that's going to allow us to very quickly grow a ton of wheat and we can use that as a food source we can make even more bread the other seed that i want is the grass seed as you mentioned earlier that's going to allow us to get some passive mobs and more importantly it's going to allow us to burn meal for poppies now to do that we do need to get at least one burn meal potentially a few burn meal if we're going to make this work thankfully though we can sift compressed dust to get burn meal and so i think that is going to be fine this is basically done and so if we go ahead and ultimine all of this we don't get anything. I really thought you didn't need to use the crook, but it turns out you do indeed have to use the crook. That's my bad. If you alter mine with the crook, you get a ton of string. I always thought it was the case that the crook just got you more string, but it wasn't strictly necessary. Turns out that's not the case. You do actually need to use the crook if you want to get the string. That is good to know. But either way, we still got a ton of string from those two silkworms, and we also got a ton of extra silkworms, over two stacks of them that we can use going forward if we want to get even more string. So let's craft nine string together. That gets us our string mesh. Let's put the rest of the string and the silkworms away for the time being. And then over in our sieve, let's also eat a little bit of food here because uh, ultimining all of that uh, string did take it out of us. Let's do this and this. And if you just hold right click, we should be able to sift this dirt and if the game doesn't crash, there we go, okay, we uh, get a lot of stuff. The things that we're after, again, are grass seeds. I guess beetroot seeds also have the same effect, right? Because we can craft beetroots down into red dye. And so you know what? That might actually be fine. We might not need the grass at all. Obviously, grass at some point would be useful. But I guess what we can do for now is just hoe any ground, plant the beetroot seeds. We should be able to sprint to make those grow faster. And then boom, that is red dye taken care of. So I guess let's take that beetroot. And uh, also, real quick, there are a few things we need to do here. We're going to take the beetroot. We'll take some string. Let's get a bunch of wool. And then let's craft that with the red dye to get red wool. And as long as we have two, that gets us our first bits of red carpet. But we're almost certainly going to need more than that because we need two red carpet per infusion pedestal. And we do need eight of these so we are going to need more of all of that that's fine let's dump all of this back into the chest for the time being one thing we should do sooner rather than later i think is get a new hatchet we do still have our wooden hatchet in here this one right here but it's kind of garbage and we should definitely invest in a tinker's axe especially now that we have the smeltery and so let's take the pickaxe head cast and what i'll probably do is just get a little chest that we can put down next to the smeltery for these casts. So let's put a chest, let's say right about here, and we'll stick the cast in there just so we can access that in the future if we want to make a higher tier pickaxe head. Then what we can do is we can grab one cobblestone out of the system, and inside of our pot builder, we can go ahead and craft the small axe head. And just like last episode, it's the same idea here. We can place down the axe head. We can pull the gold over it. That's going to get us the axe head cast. And then from there, we'll just take some of the raw iron that should be in here. It is indeed. And again, I think it's the same in that it also requires two iron ingots. It totally does. So we'll drop that back down. We'll drop in one iron ore chunk, like so. Once that's smelted, we'll pull that out. While we're waiting for that to smelt, let's grab some bread. 
so that we can walk a little bit faster. And then let's go ahead and make yet another tool binding. Of course, just like with the pickaxe, you do want this to be made out of wood because it doesn't have that negative durability modifier. And we also need the tool handle as well. I think that's everything for the X, but we can check in here. It is indeed you'd one X head, one tool handle and one tool binding. And so let's go and pull this iron out, grab the X head and back over here, we can do boom, boom, boom. And we have an iron X, which we can straight away upgrade with a diamond to give us extra durability and extra speed. And that is gonna make tearing down all of these just that little bit easier. Now that this is clear, I'm gonna go ahead and dedicate at least half of this to wheat seeds. Uh, I think eventually we'll probably have this fully dedicated to wheat, but uh, for the time being, we do need a combination of both wheat and beetroot so that we can make all of the red carpet required for all of the pedestals. All right, so here we can get a ton of wheat very quickly and so our food situation should be pretty much taken care of going forward here which is very nice indeed um, again we will set up another storage drawer uh, over here for the wheat seeds and the wheat just to allow us to store all of that without filling up our colossal chest now that that's taken care of somebody in the twitch chat has made a good point in that we can make a lot of red carpet with less red dye if we first make regular carpet like this, and then craft that in a circle with one red die. This gets us eight red carpet per die. Whereas if we do it the other way around, it takes two red die to make two red wool. That only makes you three red carpet. So this is definitely a more efficient way of doing it. We need three red carpet for the infusion altar. And then we need eight infusion pedestals, which it turns out is 16 red carpet. Nice. So I think we should have basically everything we need here. We need eight gold ingots and two more here. So 10 gold ingots in total. That is all that we are missing in here. We've got exactly five gold chunks. And as luck would have it, smelted in our smelter here, five gold chunks is going to get us 10 gold ingots. Now we have run into a slight problem. It's not really a problem. It's just um, a little bottleneck in that our smeltery is not particularly big. Now we do have more seared brick here. Unfortunately, I don't think we have quite enough seared brick to make our smeltery taller. Never mind, we totally do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is going to increase, actually double the size of our smeltery's smelting slots. And so now going forward, we can smelt up to eight things at a time. And of course, you can make this really as tall as you like to smelt as much as you'd like at once, which is pretty nifty. Uh, if we are going to actually get this gold out, though, that is where things become a bit of a problem because we could pull it out over here. And in fact, we might as well, if we do this, that's gonna pull out a block of gold in the basin. But if we want to pull out that last gold, we need an ingot cast. And the trouble is that the ingot cast is made using gold. So do we have an iron ingot in here? We do not, but we do have a copper ingot, which I think will work just as well. So if I put that in here and I pull the gold over that, that is gonna transform that into an ingot cast. But of course it used the gold in the process. So now I need to get one more gold in order to make this happen. Thankfully, I am fairly certain that in the little mining tunnel that we dug at the start of the episode, I saw some gold. I think it's just down here. Once again, we'll just drop one more gold in here. And as soon as that is smelted, we should be able to pull those two gold ingots out over the ingot cast. Once that's done, and once we've crafted up the infusion altars here, which are going to require some more stone, but again, that's fine. We can craft stone directly with the stone essence, and we've got a bunch of it available in here. Once we've actually crafted this, though, we are going to need yet more space. Our island keeps running out of space very quickly. And so I think we're probably going to expand yet further in this direction and build another one of these little platforms behind the smeltery. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, bank over here, do we have what it takes to make the infusion altar? We do. Do we have what it takes to make eight infusion pedestals? We do. And so now we have almost everything to start making these seeds. We just need to set up this altar. And so it's tricky though, because with this, all of our other setups, we've managed to kind of convert them to work on an uneven platform. And by uneven, I mean the platform is even, but it doesn't have a center block. So this is an eight by eight platform. But this setup here is pretty stringent in how it's built. If I put this down, you can see where the pedestals need to go. And so it does kind of need to go at the center of an odd platform. 
which is tricky given the way that we've designed this base. Okay, so I decided on building a lower platform here to allow us to do odd sized little uh, modules here. So we've got ladders coming down. Our chest, colossal chest, is right here above me. And uh, there's also a creeper up there, though. What we've done here, by the way, we come down to a ladder. We've got a little four by four here. So basically on this lower level, we're going to do four wide paths and then the platforms are going to be 11 by 11. So they do have a perfect center, which is going to be useful for things like the infusion altar here. The only problem is I don't want to die. I have claimed my chunks, which means I'm fairly certain. And for those who don't know, you press M to open this map, click claim chunks, and then you can uh, just left click on chunks to claim them. They're then yours. Uh, if you're playing on a server, it means other people can't mess with any of this stuff in there. Let's run. I don't know. Oh no, I do know where the mobs are. Oh no, I don't know where the mobs are spawning. They might be spawning on top of the smeltery because unlike all of the other modules, let me press F7 here. Oh, maybe not. They could also be spawning on top of the, the jumbo furnaces potentially. We don't have a sword. I do have this axe, which is apparently good enough. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, It could be the jumbo furnaces. Let me put just a couple of torches temporarily on the walls there. We should take a look up at some point to see if there are red lines up there. But uh, either way, what I am going to do is quickly dump some of this stuff here. Grab more of the stone bricks. We've already got some more stone. Let's make sure we also have our chisel. And just like we've done before, we're going to use the same design pattern like we've done here on this lower platform. So we've got our double wide uh, ladders here. These go down. And then we can have another little module here. We can have another one back here, another one here. We can continue out and build as many of these as we like and as many odd platforms as we're going to need for whatever setups require a center block. I don't think I mentioned it in the last episode, but if you place down these chisel blocks, sometimes they do kind of mess up like this. All you got to do is press F3 and A, and that will reload all the chunks so that they look how they're supposed to. Either way, we do now have this odd platform down, and so... If we place our infusion altar in the center, we can then place the infusion pedestals around it in the ghost blocks like so. And then we can place down a few torches as well, just to make sure that no mobs spawn down here. At some point, it would be nice to replace these with maybe glowstone or potentially a feral flare lantern. This is a super nifty block that places down invisible lights, but still lights up the area quite well. We don't have glowstone just yet, but I'm sure we'll get there at some point in the near future. Now that we have this infusion altar down though, we should be able to start making different seeds. For example, if we wanted to make diamond seeds here, ooh, these are expensive because they require supremium essence. Let's take a step back and let's start with iron seeds maybe. These do require tertium essence. Okay, so one thing we are going to have to do that is we're going to have to work our way through the essences from mystical agriculture. So the way that we do that is we take some of our inferium, which is all the way over here. I'm probably going to move this drawer. Like previously, I thought that my base center was going to be over here. It's not. It's over there. So I'll probably move these drawers over to here and move the bed somewhere else. But basically, we need to upgrade our essence. If we type in essence into JEI, there are quite a few tiers. It starts with the inferium, then prudentium, then tertium, then imperium, supremium, then insanium, and then finally creative is the final tier of essence. So the way that we upgrade from inferium to prudentium is by crafting four inferium around either an inferium infusion crystal or a master infusion crystal. The inferium infusion crystal is fairly easy to make. It's four inferium, four prosperity shards, and an inferium gemstone. The inferium gemstone is very much so like the inferium ingot that we saw earlier. It's two inferium and a prosperity gemstone. This requires a double compressed cobblestone, which is just cobblestone compressed twice. So you take cobblestone, you craft it like this to get compressed cobblestone. Let's do this to get a bunch of it. And then you craft it again to get double compressed cobblestone. We can then take that. And if we do this, we get the gems. We can then craft those gems like so. That's going to get us the gemstones. The master infusion crystal is what we want, but you'll see to make it, we do need some insanium essence and a supremium infusion crystal. And so we do have to go through all of the different tiers of infusion crystal. Uh, if we go infusion crystal, you'll see that there are associated tiers of infusion crystal for all of the different tiers of essence. You've got to go through all of those before you can get to the master infusion crystal. The master infusion crystal is the best because it can do all of the crafts and it doesn't have durability. So that's kind of the end goal. But before we can get there, we have to start with these worst crystals first. 
That's fine, though. Uh, you take your crystal and you craft four Inferium around it, and that gets you the Prudentium. Nice. And this can do 256 crafts. So let me dump most of my stuff here. I'm going to keep the bread because I need to eat that, but everything else can go away. I do want to make sure that I put all of my casts in the correct drawer. Let's drop that in there. And then again, everything else can go away for the time being because we're probably going to want the inventory space here. I'm going to take some more prosperity shards out and we'll also craft up some more double compressed cobblestone. So we'll craft all of that and then we'll craft all of this. And then we'll craft all those down into double. Nice. Okay, cool. And then we might as well just craft all of those into gems from the start here because you need gems for all of the different tiers of crystal. Thankfully, again, getting basically an infinite amount of Inferium is not tricky for us. Running back and forth gets us Inferium at an insanely quick rate. And so it's mostly a case of just crafting these crystals kind of over and over again so that we can do something like this and then... Shift click that in. I'm not quite sure why I only put uh, four in there. Usually when you shift click like that, it puts in all that it can. So normally it would do four stacks like this. So that's one crystal taken care of. That got us four stacks of Prudentium. And we can do the same thing here. So we need a uh, Prudentium infusion crystal, which we can make. That does require the previous crystal, but it only uses one of its uses. So that's something to bear in mind, I guess. Then we can take all four of these and craft that up to Tertium. Now that we have Tertium, we can get Iron Seeds. So the Iron Seeds are... Fairly straightforward. We do need two blocks of iron and two iron ingots. So right now we've got six iron there, and I think that's kind of about it. That is going to get us 12 iron in the smeltery, but if we need two blocks plus two more, that is more than 12. And so real quick, let's pop back through to the mining dimension. Uh, there is a creeper in here as well. Thankfully, that wasn't too bad. Let's grab some more iron. Uh, six might do it for us, but just to be safe, I think I did also, again, see, yeah, yet more iron down here. Might as well grab that. Ten is definitely going to be enough because that's 20 iron through the smeltery. And so once all of that is smelted, it's just a case of putting all of the right things on all of the right pedestals. In the case of iron seeds, that means putting two blocks of iron, two iron ingots, four tertium, and then one prosperity seed base. The prosperity seed base is one regular old wheat seed. We now have stacks of them crafted with four prosperity shards, like so. That's going to go in the center pedestal. Like that. We then need the four tertium, so we'll do one, two, three, and four, like that. Let's pull out two blocks of iron. The good thing about this is that we can pull out the iron ingot at the same time that the iron block is being pulled out on the other side. So we'll take you and get another one going because we need two iron ingots. Over here, it does take a little bit longer for the iron block to cool down. But once it's done, we can pull another iron block out, assuming we have enough iron in there, which we do not. That's fine. How much do we have in here is a good question. I thought it would tell me at the top there. It doesn't. That's fine. We'll put a bunch more iron in. We can always just pull that out in ingot form or as an extra block if we want it. And that's just extra iron for us to have. And there we go. Once that second block of iron is done, we can then go and make this happen. We do need some kind of redstone signal. I think a button here is going to make the most sense. So let's just take one oak plank and craft that into one Minecraft button. And so now, over here, we need to place the redstone signal down around the infusion altar somewhere. So just on one of these four sides. Then we can do two iron blocks and two iron ingots. It doesn't matter where you put these, by the way. You don't have to put them in this specific order. Uh, for example, I could put this Inferium here and I could put the iron here. The recipe will still work just so long as all of the items are on the pedestals and so long as the right item is on the infusion altar, it should work. To make this happen, just click the button and you'll know it's worked if it starts doing the animation. And after a few seconds, we should have, look at that, our first iron seed. Nice. And so now, going forward, if we want more iron, we no longer have to faff around with going through to the mining dimension, mining iron ore, bringing it back, putting it in the smeltery, spending some of our lava. We don't have to do any of that. Instead, all we need to do, much like with everything else that we're growing, is take our hoe, plop that down, make sure it's an inferior essence farmland so we can get extra seeds. And as we harvest, we're going to get iron essence, and that iron essence can be crafted, you guessed it, directly into iron ingots, which is going to make getting iron substantially easier and just like with everything else we get more seeds as we go 
Again, make sure that this is inferior like that. And so it really is not gonna take us too long to get 64 iron seeds to fill up another one of these farming plots, at which point getting iron is gonna be a piece of cake. Super easy for us to do. And so I'll probably go ahead and build out this farm here and get it set up with iron seeds. We do of course now have access to diamonds and so we can kind of scrap our old stone wand. And if we take one of our diamonds out of the chest here, the colossal gigantic chest, along with at least two sticks, we can make a wand that not only is going to allow us to place down more blocks at a time, up to 128, but it also has substantially more durability than our previous wand as well. So let's take some of the dirt that we have. We are going to need 64, so let's decraft some of our compressed dirt here. And now, if we come over here, what we should be able to do is place down the initial eight dirt. And I guess we could do this with the uh, the stone one before because the stone one could do nine, but we can put down all of these nice and quickly. The slightly more beneficial part here is the fact that the sides here are slightly longer than nine blocks. And so before when I was building out this path, it, uh, it took a little longer with the stone wand because we need to go and do one, two, three, four, five. Previously with the stone wand, it would only do the first nine. Whereas with this one, we can just go ahead and place down really as many as we like. 128 is almost certainly more than I'm ever going to need. So chat is right here in that if we wanted to, we could use our tertium and get some tertium farmland. You know what, I'll do it right in the center here. The reason I'm not gonna do that just yet, like I'm gonna do it here just to show that it works, but the reason I'm not gonna do that for all of our farmland is that I kind of want to try and beeline towards this master infusion crystal, which is gonna require a ton of kind of micro crafting with these different crystal tiers. And I don't wanna use a large amount of our tertium essence just yet until we have that master infusion crystal, because once we have that, it's gonna make our lives just so much easier. But with the tertium essence, we still have the same secondary output chance. It is growing faster. I think we get more essence with the tertium farmland. So here, we have 17, we have 18. Here, we got 19. I think there might be a chance with the tertium that you get more than one essence per right click, 19 to 20, 20 to 21. So far, not looking particularly good. That's 22, and that's 24. So we did get two that time from the tertium essence. And so, as you move up the chain to higher tier farmlands, you have more of a chance to get more essence every time you harvest. So it is potentially worth doing, but again, not until we have the master infusion crystal. I'm gonna do the rest of these the old fashioned way with Inferium. All right, and here we go. We have another eight by eight farm with one odd little piece of tertium farmland in the middle there. In the time it took me to do that, we got 13 stacks of iron essence. And so we can take a ton of that over to our crafting table and uh, we did craft some more storage drawers, of course, to store all of the iron essence and seeds, but we can take that and craft that into just a ton of iron, really as much iron as we like. And so we essentially, for all intents and purposes, have an infinite amount of iron going forward, which is incredibly handy. And so really, if we want to do the same thing with gold, with emeralds, with lapis, and with diamonds, and I guess also with redstone, it's kind of more of the same idea here. In fact, we probably don't even need such large farms. It might look cool to keep going out and do more of these uh, these eight by eight farms, but given how fast we got a ton of resources there, the, the 64 block farm, whilst maximizing efficiency probably isn't strictly necessary. We already have two redstone here. I don't recall seeing any redstone down this tunnel, but as we saw at the beginning of the stream, we can go ahead and do more small tunnel mining if we just keep going in a straight line here. Chat is right in that we do actually have some down by this pool of lava here. There's some right here. So let's take that. And again, four is really all that we need. Let's go back to uh, shapeless there to get all of it anyway. But um, if we have at least four, that is gonna get us the redstone seed. And much like with the iron seed, we can do the same thing with the redstone seed and get basically an infinite amount of redstone. The reason I've chosen redstone is that redstone also just requires the tertium essence. I guess it would be nice to get the master infusion crystal sooner rather than later. But in terms of making these seeds here, we don't necessarily need to get the master infusion crystal to get most of these seeds taken care of. Gold and lapis both just require Imperium and Imperium we can make after Tertium. And I think we could probably get the eight Tertium required to make those two. And then even the Supremium here is expensive, but I think it's probably quite doable. 
let's not forget that we do need to get some more of these prosperity seeds. I feel like we should probably just make quite a few of these. It might be worth getting uh, even more prosperity shards. Thankfully, those seem to be the most common ore in the mining dimension, so I'm not too worried about running out of prosperity shards. Over here on our altar, let's put the seed in the middle. Let's do one, two, three, four redstone, along with one, two, three, four tertium. I think that's the recipe. Let me just confirm. It is indeed no blocks of redstone required. Boom, that is going to get us our redstone seed. And so once that's done, I think we will look here at seeing if we can't get eight tertium for the lapis and the gold, and then potentially eight supremium. If we can get eight supremium, we can get the emerald and diamond seeds as well. I think that is going to be doable. Let me go ahead, dump some of this back here. This uh, fertilized essence isn't really useful for us because we can grow our crops so fast in a playthrough where you don't have the ability to grow a 64 block area of crops near instantly by running. You can use the fertilized essence to make mystical fertilizer, which can then be used as like an instant grow bone meal on mystical agriculture crops. But for us here, let's see if we can't make the next tier of infusion crystal, that being the tertium infusion crystal. We totally can. After that, we can take some of our tertium here. We can craft that into, we'll craft all of it into Imperium. Again, we want eight of that set aside for the gold and the lapis. The lapis we might actually already have in here. We totally do. And so once again, if we just take that four lapis with four tertium, we can get the lapis seed right away. So one, two, three, four with one, two, three, four. And of course, the seed in the middle. Boom, boom. As for, ooh, does it require, hold on, hold on. Never mind. The uh, pet creator has pulled a bit of a sneaky trick here. Unlike the redstone, the lapis does require two blocks of lapis and two pieces of lapis, kind of like with the iron. That should be fine. We do have what it takes to make two blocks of lapis. So let's do something like that. We'll take both of those. And then now if we put those back on, that should be everything that we need. One, two, and boom, to get the lapis seed. The goal is the same. We are going to have to go and get, uh, you know, 20 gold to make sure that we have enough to make the seed. But once we have that 20 gold, that should be that seed taken care of. And then we just need to get eight supremium, which is going to take a bit more essence crafting. And by a bit more, I mean a fair bit more essence crafting here because we need to turn all of our prudentium into tertium, which is easy enough. We need to turn basically all of our inferium here into prudentium and then into tertium because one supremium requires four imperium, which means that one supremium requires 16 tertium, which means it needs 64 prudentium, which means it needs four stacks of inferium. And so if we're going to get eight supremium, we need 32 stacks of inferium that we're then going to craft down into that supremium, which is doable, but it's going to require a fair bit of inventory space. So let me clear that out. And it's going to take just a little bit of time and quite a few of these inferium infusion crystals. We do now have enough to make the Imperium Infusion Crystal. There we go. And so that is going to allow us to make our first bits of Supremium. And in fact, we already have the four required for the diamonds. That did not take too long at all. And so do we have four diamonds? We totally do. Do we need two blocks of diamonds is the real question. Yeah, we do. I thought that might be the case. That should be fine, though. We've got nine diamonds here. We do need 20, so we need 11 more. But diamonds have been surprisingly common here in the mining dimension and so i don't think finding more of them is really going to be that tricky all right there's 21 diamonds one more than we need and so now if we head back we should have everything we need to make these diamond seeds let's do two blocks of diamond one and two prosperity shard base in the middle two blocks of diamond two regular diamonds and four supremium one two three four click the button Boom, that is diamond seeds taken care of. And so now, just like with the iron seeds before, we can now make an infinite number of diamond seeds incredibly quickly. And we can use that infinite number of diamond seeds to get an infinite number of diamond essence. And of course, all of that diamond essence can be used to make an infinite number of diamonds. Harvest this. It takes nine diamond essence to make one diamond. So it is definitely going to be slower going than it was with the iron, but it is still going to be way faster than mining for this in the mining dimension. I do notice we're not, or we've yet to get a, a diamond seed. I wonder if you are slightly less likely to get extra seeds of higher tier 
essences. Not that it's particularly going to be a problem for us. We will get it eventually. And of course, it is kind of exponential. Once you get uh, two, you can get four and then you can get, you know, eight and 16. And it kind of spirals out of control real quick once you start getting a couple of them. It does say secondary chance is still 10%, but we've managed to get 20 essence without a second seed. Which is making me think it might be slower, but it's also possible that we just got unlucky, to be fair. But uh, yeah, going forward, we can just craft diamonds like this. Nice. So between streams, I might look into expanding out the platform, building out more of these farms to make space for lapis, for redstone. Uh, we'll get gold, we'll get diamond. I don't know if we necessarily need emerald just yet. That does require four more supreme essence, which is going to be a bit of a pain to craft. But uh, next time we'll come back and we should probably look at getting a mob farm up and running. I think that's something that we could definitely do with looking into. We can, of course, look at upgrading our furnaces, of course, down here. Once you have a mob farm, of course, we can also look at upgrading our jumbo furnaces to make those a bit more viable as well. And of course, there's just more of the pack to play with here. We've got refined storage. It's going to make our storage situation just that little bit nicer. We can hook it up to our colossal chest and just use this as a giant inventory sink that we can then access with our refined storage system. We could also look at getting into power at some point sooner rather than later as well. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Mystical Block there.